Nitrogen is the most abundant element on our planet. It makes up 80% of the air we breathe and is found in every living creature on Earth. But too much of it in our waterways can be deadly for all the creatures that live in them. Today, I'm going to show you just how bad excess nitrogen is for our waterways. The best place to see these effects is Florida's freshwater springs. There have been many studies on the springs of Florida because they are our best window into the health of our aquifer. Out of the 49 first magnitude springs in Florida, Fanning Springs had the highest level of nitrogen. It has more than 50 times the normal levels. It is located in Fanning Springs State Park in North Florida, so that's where we're going to first. After jumping in, I was surprised at the lack of fish in this spring. The bottom looked like a desert. I swam around for a while and finally spotted a few fish, but they were just grass carp, a fish that you would expect to see because they only eat grasses and algae. The side of the spring was covered with filamentous algae. That's an algae that is common in real sick springs. 30 years ago, it was basically non-existent, but today it is all too common in many freshwater springs. As I took a breath and dove down to the bottom where the water was bubbling up from the aquifer, the water was clear, but the fish were just not as plentiful as any other spring I have dove. The algae covered all the rocks on the bottom, feeding on the excess nitrogen pouring out of this spring. As I swam up on the other side, I came across a few mullet, another algae eater. Not exactly the fish that you would like to see in a healthy spring. There was a beautiful cypress tree near the head spring, so I spent a little time snooping around the base of this tree to see if I could spot any fish living in its many roots, but no luck. On the swim back to the dock, I came across a small bluegill, but it had open sores on its gill and a split tail. I have dove in many springs across Florida, and this one was clearly in distress. Next stop, Manatee Springs. It's just a few miles from here, and its nitrogen levels are almost as high as Fanning Springs. It's a much larger spring and has a bigger run down to the river, so I was hoping to see a lot more fish here. When I jumped in, the bottom was lifeless and the algae was thick. As a small strand drifted by, I remember the last time I dove this spring, there were all sorts of fish. A lot sure has changed in the 30 years since the last time I was here. I started swimming up the river to the head spring and came across a half dozen grass carp feeding on algae. The closer I got to the head spring, the algae got thicker and thicker. It was covering everything. There was no way any other aquatic plant could survive. As I got to the edge of the spring, I dove down and the water was murky and all the tree branches had long strands of algae swaying in the current and I didn't even see a single fish in the head spring. Well that was just depressing. This spring used to be full of fish. I thought Fanny Springs was bad, but this one looked even worse. We're going to jump back in the truck and I'm going to show you where all the nitrogen is coming from that is making these two springs so sick. There are eight dairy farms and 23 poultry farms upstream of these two springs. These farms collectively produce tons and tons of animal waste and being so close, they overwhelm the groundwater with toxic nitrogen. Dairy farms are the worst since the cows need milking every day. They cram hundreds of them into pens so they have to raise hay and alfalfa to feed them. Not only do these farms produce animal waste, which is full of nitrogen, but the groundwater gets a second dose of nitrogen from all the chemical fertilizers and pesticides they spray on the hay. I know we all depend on farmers to provide us with the food we need to stay alive, but we gotta figure out how we can do it without killing our environment. Okay, we've seen how animal waste can affect a spring. So let's go check out another spring that has high levels of nitrogen. I'm talking about Wakiva Springs. There isn't any dairy farms around here. It's located in a busy suburb of Orlando, Florida. And the only thing around this spring is lots of people. Unfortunately, people create lots of nitrogen. Not only is our waste full of nitrogen, but many of the chemicals we use contain nitrogen, like household cleaners, pesticides, fertilizers, oil and gas. Even our food contains nitrogen. Most of these chemicals get washed down into our groundwater and into our aquifer. I picked a day that wasn't busy, so I practically had the place to myself. I jumped in and swam around, and again, there wasn't any fish to speak of. The only fish were air-breathing mollies. 
That's one of the only fish that could survive in a low oxygen environment. Then I came across a bluegill, so I followed it and noticed it was suffering from a tumor on its belly. Just like Fanning Springs, the very few fish that are here are sick. The sad thing is the nitrogen levels in this spring is 15 to 20 times the normal level, and that's the exact same level that's in my hometown, St. Lucie River. Now that I've shown you three springs that are in distress, it's time to show you a couple that are not. The Ocala National Forest is home to two of the largest springs in Florida, and they are surrounded by thousands of acres of pristine forest that will never be developed. The nitrogen levels in these two springs are just slightly higher than normal. Alexander Springs is one of my favorite springs. It gets a little busy on the weekend, but it's big enough to share with a couple of dozen people. As soon as you enter the water, it just feels clean. The water is crystal clear, and there isn't much in the way of algae. Eelgrass is the main plant in this spring, and that's what we want. The bass and bluegill feel right at home amongst the lily pads. I usually see a few turtles, but this day I must have seen a dozen. Everywhere I turned, I saw turtles chomping on grass. The last time I was here, I had a face-to-face -face with a nine-foot American alligator. I kept coming back until it slowly lowered and went back into its hole. I've seen anhingas swimming around looking for a little snack. I've seen otters. And once, I had a soft-shelled turtle come right up to my camera and look at itself in my lens. This is how springs are supposed to look like. That was gorgeous, but I saved the best for last. We're going to dive Silver Glen Springs next, and it's located right next to Lake George, and there is usually lots of fish in this spring. In the summer months, schools of striped bass come into the spring from the St. John River. You will see striped bass as well as hybrid bass by the thousands. I made several passes through them, and they didn't even seem to mind. Some of the bass like to stage right in front of the vent and paddle fast because the current is really running. There are lots of largemouth bass, and they seem to be very healthy. Lower nitrogen levels do matter in any body of water, and this is how all springs are supposed to look like. All over this planet, bodies of water are suffering from large amounts of nitrogen, and this problem is only going to get worse. Farms are by far the biggest source, but people also contribute. Almost everything we do creates nitrogen. We have to get everyone to recognize this problem so that we can work together to decrease the nitrogen getting into our waterways.